Hi everyone, it's Dr. Dickinson. Today we're going to be looking at how we can use Google Forms to create a math assessment. So this is a fun and easy tool to use. In fact, you might have so much fun that you'll teach your students and they'll be making their own quizzes. So today I'm going to show you. First thing you want to do is log into your Google Drive account. Once you're here, you click on the plus sign. So we're going to create a new document. Actually, it's a Google Form. Then you move down to Forms, which you click on More, and you just select Google Forms. So now we have our new form that we get to modify and have a lot of fun with. I'm going to first start by changing the title, uh, and I'll call this Operations and Algebraic Thinking. Not thinking, thinking. I'll describe my form. This form is going to be exploring about understanding multiplication concepts. Okay, so feel free to pause the video anytime if you want to follow along with me. Now that I have the title, I can select on the untitled form at the top and you can see that the title that I created here has now popped up and so I can see it in my drive. If you look here, you can see that this form is requiring an email address. This is the nice setting if you have a large class size and you don't want students to make up names or not use their real names or use someone else's names. I mean, the scenarios are really endless, especially when you get to upper elementary, middle school, and high school. So for the sake of sanity, I would recommend keeping the email address here. But there's other really fun settings that you can do with Google Forms. If you don't want to collect email addresses, then you just unselect that box. Let's just say it's just an anonymous survey. You can also limit to one response. You can allow your respondents to edit after they submit, which is a nice feature, as well as see a summary chart and text responses. I like that because then as a participant, I can see what other people are thinking. And if you're using this in your math classroom, it's really a great platform to have a nice discussion with all of your students about what students are thinking. Some other features, if you want to include this in your presentation, you can show the progress bar. You can also shuffle the question order so that students are working on different questions at the same time. Think about cheating. That kind of lowers the opportunity to cheat if everybody's working on a different question. And then you can also include a confirmation message that your respondents will receive after they finish the assessment. You rock. All right, quiz feature is awesome. If you have large class sizes, making your Google Forms a quiz is gonna give you some additional functionality and tools. Students get a grade after submission. Um, you can have later after manual review if you want to turn on email collection. Respondents can see what questions they missed. That means they which questions they answered incorrectly. They can also correct their answers and they can see their point values. So we'll just save that for now. And you feel free to play around with any of those features. Let's get started with the question. Just click on that option right there. And now I can change, I can add some text if I want. I'm gonna select a question that I actually wrote in my Google Notes. Here, and just paste it in. Sally is the collection of 16 objects. What are some ways she can arrange her group of objects? Record at least three multiplication equations to represent her group of objects. Wonderful, so I'm having my students write an equation, think about different ways to, different values or different products of 16, if you will, um, and different ways to express that. So I don't wanna give them, I could give them multiple choice, but I'm gonna change that. I think if they're gonna be writing their own equation, I want them to kind of come up with it on their own. So that'll give them the option to do a long answer text. All right, let's do another question. Let's say I want to do a question that includes a video. So I'll tell them, watch, oops, watch the video and respond with your answer. It's going to be a short answer. Again, I can change it here. Now I'm going to add a video 
oops, not an image. I'm going to add a video and I'll show you how to do that. So I want to click on the video button. This will be a three, maybe act one of chocolate milk. One of my favorite three acts. I think there's a video of me doing that in the YouTube channel too. So let's get started. It's in there. They're going to work on the video and respond. Okay. I'm going to title this video. Okay. And I'll just, for better clarification, watch the video below, below and respond with your answer. All right, let's do another question. Let's say you wanted to ask a question that includes some operations that you might have difficulty typing in here, like one half of two thirds. You can go to um, Google Drawings, which is another Google tool, and you can actually write in some equations here. Google Drawings has a wonderful feature that where you can include special characters. So if I click one half, it actually puts it in there. And I will go into insert and click on special characters. I like you, you're in there. Equals. Now I can just select that text and put it into my form. Boom, it's there. Again, multiple choice, short answer, you decide. All right, finally, let's create one more question. This one will include a image. Let's say I have a really great question that I want to include. Maybe it's in my um, class textbook but I don't want to print it out and I want to include other questions. So again, I can change it to any of these choices. Now I'm going to say, if you read the question and find the mistake, period. Click on this image icon. Choose an image. It's my screenshot I just took of my math textbook. Because I like students to think about what's wrong with the problem and how they would solve it. And there it is. So just three different ways, three different kinds of questions. Actually, I think I did four total. Again, you can see the total points. So if I wanted to change any of those features, I could do that. If I wanted to say this is worth 10 points, I could do that. I can um, also require a response validation. So if I wanted to make sure that they responded or give them a range of responses, then you can change this here. If they don't have a text that contains text, then they'll get an error text, custom error text. Please try again. Okay. This tool right here allows me to enter the answer key and points. If I want to do that, if I'm just looking at collecting some data and sharing it, I might not have to put in the answer key and response, but that is also an option. Again, I want to make sure that these questions are answered. Okay, if I want to know my students to have multiple choices here, multiple responses, I know that one fourth divided by one half is two. I want to make sure that my students um, have a response val validation and they have the number can change it to equal to two. And if they don't put two, then they say, try again. All right, so that is how you create a Google Form assessment. Don't forget that you will wanna share this link 
with your students. So you just click on the send button at the top.